Hello everyone, I am Bradley Sword, Associate Professor of Computer and Information Science at the College of DuPage in Glen Ellen, Illinois. And this video, that's a mouthful right there, proper camera rotation in a Legend of Zelda style adventure game using Game Maker Studio 2.3 and using Game Maker Language. So I've, the previous video that I've made, I made a Legend of Zelda style game. You can see this right here. I made just a Zelda game where you can move around and the camera follows you around and stuff like that. And I was just having some fun with this. I'm like, what can I do with a Legend of, style style, you know, Legend of Zelda style game? So I got rid of the camera, or I guess I didn't get rid of it, but I changed it around a little. So I went like, I can, oops, I got to click in here so I can move. And so I'm walking around and notice now that the camera follows the player. And what's cool about it is I changed the camera object. So again, please go back to my previous video if, uh, if you need that. And just let me find the viewport. And what's surprising here is I do not have an object following. I still am not using this. And by changing the code like I'm going to show you, if I made it object following, this would not be allowed. Let me go back. Let me open up my game here again. I couldn't do this. Look what happens over here. Or I can go off the screen to the left and the top and the, and the bottom. And I personally like this because if I hit the edge of a screen, I know I'm at the edge of the screen. But if I don't, if I put stuff around the edges here, if I just put a lot of trees and I just put other things, I, could, I can trick the, the player into thinking that there's more, you know, past the edge of the room than there truly is. And so, so cool. So I'm going to show you how to do this without using the object following. That's very, it's actually quite simple. And then this is the cool part here. You ready? Rotation. I can actually rotate the camera. And I was having fun with it. Trees and objects don't necessarily ever rotate. But isn't it kind of cool that the, that the walls and the tree objects rotate with the camera? And what's doubly cool is because if I press up, you would expect my my guy to go up. What in this case it's like 45 degrees, but I and I'm going to show you how I can do this so that if I press up, it always goes up, no matter which direction the camera is facing. Up is always up, left is always left, right is always right, and down is always down. Relation to the window, not relation to the game world. And that's what you want. To, that's what you want in a in a game where you can rotate your camera, especially in a top down view, sort of like this. Maybe Link shouldn't rotate with the camera until you move the character, but you kind of get, I would maybe fix that up, but this was just the first pass. I, I spent a few minutes just having some fun with this just to see what I can do. And there's, it, you know, the room to room thing is kind of gone now, as you can probably see there, but I can move the, I, I can move the character around and I, and I, and I'll show you guys in a second too. I brought my move slide solid function in. This does, I can't slide against the walls like this, I cannot make this easier for the character to walk around without using my move slide solid function. So this is my move slide solid script slash function from a pr another previous video. So there's two previous videos for this, but you don't necessarily have to watch that other video. If you, if you don't care how the code works, then don't worry about it. But if you do care, you can go back and look how I've, how I turn one movement into two uh, two movements, one that goes horizontal and one that goes vertical. So that means that if I get stuck to a wall, I don't necessarily get stuck if it's two movements instead of one. So that's just it. I, I've added this move slide solid function to my previous uh, the previous work here. I've added uh, a few sprites here. I don't I didn't you know in the room itself. I don't want to screw around with the room and make the designer go crazy trying to figure out how to. Uh, how to move these things around so they're pixel perfect and all these things that can go wrong. So the trees themselves are okay, but I'm going to draw here. I have a, what I call tree centered. It's a duplication of the tree, but I instead of being left center or I'm saying left up upper left uh, justified here when it comes to the origin point, I'm using middle center, and it's the same for the wall, the tree and the wall, and actually link is the same way. I'm not using those attack sprites in this video either, but I've centered link. And and it, and in this way, it doesn't matter where I put Link in the room because Link isn't you know Link as long as he's not somewhere where he gets stuck in a wall to start off with, it's not going to matter. But so I don't need separate sprites for center versus normal, so I just centered him. And so yeah, so that's all I've done to the sprites. You know, said so the tree itself I left alone, the wall I left alone, but I've created tree centered and wall centered sprites. 
and and then I have the move slide solid. So then now you say with all of this said and done here on the sprite side and the script side, now it's just a matter of going back and fixing the code up. So here's my camera. I have a step event. If you remember my previous video, this thing got a little this thing got a little, you know, there was quite a bit of code here, or at least it was more complicated code. But it's it kind of simplifies, at least the way I'm doing it right now, is because no matter where the character is in the world, it's centered in my camera view. And as you sh as we we saw, there's nothing to indicate that the camera it could stop at the edge of the room. If you want to, you could play with this. I'm not going to play with this, but you can play with the this setting to make sure that the value never gets lower than zero and, and it never gets greater than the room width and this never gets less than zero or higher than the or greater than the room height and so forth and so on and all you have to do is tinker and play with and basically clamp your your variables inside of here if you want that to happen but if you really want that to happen then just use the then just use the object following inside of the room but anyway, the same kind of rules apply where I'm just, I'm basically taking my camera on a frame by frame basis and say, hey, the upper left hand corner is 640 pixels left of link and 360 pixels above. And the reason for those numbers is, of course, that my width and my height are 128720. So that's half of that because I want my, I want my link character to be centered. So half of 1280 is 640. Half of 720 is 360, so we're good to go there. And now it's just a matter of, okay, I know link is centered, but now what about everything else? And I go, if I press A, the A key, I rotate the camera. And so it's pretty simple stuff. Get the camera, current camera angle and change it. And that's all. And it, the hard part for this, especially if, if you're coming, if it's been a, a while since you've used cameras and viewports, since they've changed things and added the, the more complex camera and viewport settings to this, it's just hard to figure out how do I get those values and how do I change them and make sure they get put back into the proper uh, objects. So it's just get me the current camera angle of camera, which is this camera, you know, which, where the link is, you know, for camera viewport zero, and then just change it accordingly to, and, and I'm just hard coding the two in there. So A moves me whichever way, and then D moves me the other way. So it's, you know, so it's all, you know, it all looks pretty good here. Do it one more time here. So I say I press, I press A, I press D, and it rotates. And so, so then everything else is now, well, how do I handle movement? Because if you just had that, Link would not move up, down, left, right. He would move up, down, left, right relative to the window are relative to the world, not relative to the window like I have set up here. So, and you would think, oh my God, that sounds so complicated. How do I get this character, this link character to always go up when I press up and always go left when I go left and so forth and so on. It's actually quite simple. Um, let me, whoops, that's it, that ain't it. Uh, step here, so all I've done here if you remember my previous video, I had all this other stuff. I had this move slide solid with hard-coded numbers for 90, 270, 180, and 0. Let me get rid of this. But all I have to do now is take into account the, the angle of the camera, get me the camera, get me the view camera, and then get me the view angle and just subtract it from the cardinal value. And honest to God, that is it. It is so stupid simple. It is so easy. Just take 90, subtract off the camera angle, it'll always go up. Take 270, subtract off the camera angle, it'll always go down. This will always go left. This will always go right. I mean, I've already shown it two or three times, but it's fun. It's exciting, right? So, the, so it's just a matter of that. No matter how I've angled, up always goes up. Right always goes right. Left and down. I think it's really stupid cool. And it just, and it's a, this, the move slide solid makes everything a lot easier. I replaced the move, uh, move contact solid with move slide solids here. Otherwise it won't work as precise as you expect. So then that's it for movement. I mean, this is a short video. I mean, it's a, I did a lot of leg work, a lot of leg work up front, but oh my goodness. I mean, now you can do this forever more and you go, well, the ch now it just graphically, how do I fix it? And it's the same deal. Get me the camera, rotate, and I don't want to do this with the actual object. I don't want to change image angle more than I have to because I don't want to change any of the actual collision boxes. Everything is axis aligned bounding boxes. I do not want to ruin that by rotating the objects in space. Maybe I do, but I'm not ready for that experiment just yet. But for pass one, just to get this thing working, get me the camera, 
get me the, figure out the camera, get me the view angle, and just negate. It, basically, because you know that by default, link is facing zero when it comes to rotation. Just for whatever reason, it's negative. Take the view angle, negate it, and then draw it, and then put it back to zero. And it's the it's the same code for link as it is for the tree. Uh, well, the only difference here, let me just, I'll talk about this in a second here, is which sprite do I draw? Because the tree itself draws this tree sprite when it comes to the, the WYSIWYG uh, room editor. But when it comes to physically drawing on the screen, it says, okay, I'm hard coding this again. I go, tw go 20 pixels over. Oh, maybe I don't need the X plus 20, Y plus 20 anymore. I don't want to tinker again since it looks, well, let, let's just tinker. Do I, need to, do I need this for the tree and the wall? Because before I changed things, I was using this. Let's see what it looks like if I get rid of this. Experiments, right? Let me just see what it looks like. Does it look any better? Does it look any worse? Yeah, this is not as good because, because of the way everything was drawn versus where everything is. The bounding boxes and the graphical. See, I can't move anywhere. The visual and the bounding boxes, the mathematics behind everything doesn't work out. So I can undo undo this and that's something as game developers especially developers maybe not designer side stuff is that a lot of times you decouple you remove the ability you know like the bounding boxes and the things you draw are completely done separately so in this case this is exactly shows this it says okay i'm rotating objects i'm moving stuff around but i'm only doing it visually to the user so that it looks like for whatever reason the tree always looks like it's facing you the wall always looks like it's facing you and again most games you probably don't want to do that because then you don't want the trees to look like they're actually living and stuff like that but you get the point here is like the 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 the, the bounding boxes and the collision detection and response is being handled completely separate from the way it's visually being shown on the screen. So that's model view controller. If you guys have done any JavaScript slash CSS slash HTML web design, web development, that's the reason why there's HTML is the model. Uh, the view is CSS and the controller is the JavaScript. And I think I got that right when I was describing it. You have three different languages that do the three different things that go on when you're dealing with web development. And here it's two separate things you know, say was you have to kind of you kind of have to do it all yourself there's no different there's one language that you have to use for all three but coming back here all i did here was just set up my draw sprite extended which takes nine parameters so in this case i said for the tree dr take the tree centered sprite image zero there's only one image so it doesn't matter what number i put here use the centering x plus 20 y plus 20 uh, scaling one one which angle that was this view camera angle like we did before and then C white for the color the tint color and then 1.0 for the alpha value because you want this thing to be fully opaque and that this is the same for the tree as it is for the wall it's just using the wall centered sprite versus the uh, tree centered sprite but link was done slightly differently, and you probably could th just. I just wanted to make sure everything was done right with the trees and the walls versus the link characters, because remember again, the trees and the walls have different centering than Link does. But that covers it. That does. I I believe it does everything. If I screwed it up, let me know. As always, but you can see here. I say that if this was a top-down game. Maybe I wouldn't worry about the trees. Like if this was a tree like that looked like top down, maybe I wouldn't worry about it angling. Cause, but you know, but I, I still think it looks kind of funny, cool that it rotates with you as you go, and it always faces everything. Always faces forward. All the collision boxes are perfectly legit. Like I said, drawing. Look at that. See, I could. The characters are technically touching when it comes to their their drawing, their sprites, but the bounding boxes are not colliding. And so the game is playing as if nothing is going on. There's nothing wrong with this, right? Maybe it's maybe it's not absolutely pixel perfect, but your but your players aren't going to mind. They're not even going to notice. It's only people like me who get into the pixel perfectness of this, and everyone tells me to get over it. That ha I don't have to worry about it because the gameplay is perfect because the bounding box itself never changes. So it it plays just like it was, you know, like basically at zero angle. I can't get it exactly perfect. It plays exactly like it's zero, but I can draw things perfectly different. 
So anyway, uh, as always, if you have any questions, concerns, or any ways to improve what I've done, because this one, maybe there's a better way to do things. I'd love to know better ways to do things like this. Uh, swordb at cod.edu, or you can always get a hold of me through the YouTube comments. So cool. I hope this was a fun video because this definitely is a step up when it comes to the bells and whistles that we can do with our game development now that we have a full adventure game where we have character movement and camera movement. Maybe next time talk about how to, instead of using the keyboard for this, we tie this to the controllers, use the two thumbsticks, one for movement and one for camera rotation, and you can start playing a real game as if it was something on a console. So anyway, thanks as always, guys. Have a great day. Take care. See you next time.